All right, we're back. We're back from a nice four-day weekend. Yes, we get vacation time too. <laughs> Uh, granted, a lot of people don't. So, hey, thanks for working while we get to take the time off. This is Zach. So, when you think I'm talking to somebody over there, the person <laughs> does exist. Zach I is do. our do intern indeed. for the summer. You got another intern. He's great. He's gonna go <laughs> get me coffee in like 20 minutes. I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Uh, of course, uh, of course. Zach, you're from uh, New Jersey. Yes. Yep. See, who else is from New Jersey? You. And. And. J.R. Smith. J.R. Smith, I know. of course. That's exactly the third person. Soon it will be Zach, Jason, and J.R. Smith on the channel. <laughs> on the big three league, <laughs> taking down. That would be the best team ever. Taking down Chauncey Billups. He'd have, the, he'd have the five point shot ready. Yeah. <laughs> like there would be a shot behind that. He, he would go. just, he would rather have all three of them just go after him. <laughs> the, we'll just chill in the corner. The behind the backboard contested turnaround yeah. three would be the five point <laughs> shot for J.R. Smith. But uh, let's jump into some uh, NBA free agency. Zach knows uh, all sports because uh, that was part of the requirements. So. Yeah. It's not like we tested him or anything though. So maybe he knows nothing. I don't know. You'll find out. You They'll, judge him. Yeah, they will determine that. Yeah. You judge Can't him in wait. the comment section. Can't uh, wait for that. <laughs> good stuff. All right. So uh, Gordon Hayward decided to sign with the Celtics in the, uh, I guess, the 4th of July fireworks that happened now in NBA free agency. I like that the list they put together, they go, all right, so it started three years ago or two years ago, technically. Well, Marcus Aldridge signs with the Spurs on 4th of July, right? And mm. back last year, Kevin Durant signs with the Warriors on 4th of July. And Gordon Hayward, there's a re like remarkable difference between Kevin Durant moving to the Warriors <laughs> and Gordon Hayward moving to the Celtics, in addition to Lamarcus Aldridge moving to the Spurs. Yes. Um, there was some great reaction, but first, we'll read you some of the numbers, some of the reason why it fits, and then we'll get into maybe why uh, the Celtics still kind of whiffed in a way on missing out on obviously better players and, and, and everything that goes with that. So D number nine has Gordon Hayward's, some of his, he was 87th percentile uh, as a pick and roll scorer, which is important for Brad Stevens' offense, and 71st in spot up catch and shoot situations, and we know the Celtics need catch and shoot situations, knocking down 40% of those shots, mostly from deep. His size and mobility as a perimeter defender are especially valuable considering the Celtics' small backcourt of five foot nine Isaiah Thomas and six foot two Avery Bradley. It comes from Matt Moore over at CBS Sports. Um, and he's right about that. Mm -hmm. They needed some scoring. They needed to get Gordon Hayward because if they whiffed on everybody in free agency, it would be a pretty big loss for the Celtics. And after trading the number one overall pick. That's right. They had to especially make sure that uh, they didn't miss out, like you said, on Gordon Hayward because uh, Danny Ainge, mm. he's been getting criticized a little bit. And after yeah. not uh, not trading for Jimmy Butler, not trading for Paul George, trading the number one overall pick to get a player like Jason Tatum and not go after Markel Fultz, this was huge for Celtics and Celtics fans everywhere to get Gordon Hayward and to have that reassurance that, okay, they're going to come right back for the number one seed next year and yeah. try and make a run at Cleveland look like, I think we were talking about it earlier, it's not really gonna make them better probably than Cleveland in it, a seven game series. It probably doesn't Six make them seven, better. The maybe. only thing I can think of that can never be ruled out, for one, I mean, when Paul George leaves the Eastern Conference and Jimmy Butler leaves the Eastern Conference, like first of all, I think Gordon Hayward is now the only player aside from LeBron James in the top 15 in PER in the Eastern Conference in the NBA. Yeah. Like you like you want to talk now about conference imbalance? There's a conference imbalance. There was a little bit of one last year, but not as much as people blew it out of proportion. Yeah. This year it's way lopsided. Yeah. Uh, in addition to that, this the, the, what you can't rule out is what if this is the year? And I don't want to wish this upon anybody that LeBron or Kyrie or somebody gets injured on the yeah. Cavs. Yeah, you and never know. If the Warriors have have gotten some luck in that regard. Yep. And I mean, Zaza injures some people, but I mean, in other previous seasons and who they've had to face. So Quiet. the thing is too, if the door is open to the Western Conference, I'm sorry, to meet a Western Conference opponent, obviously in the finals, it, it's not gonna look pretty for anybody that comes out of the Eastern Conference, even if it's the Cavs. Yeah. But the Celtics needed to do this. Um, and Danny Ainge had to come away with something or the Celtics fans might have revolted. Yeah. More importantly, or at least for the future, more importantly, Jalen Browns for some reason is at Summer League. <laughs> And Absolutely don't dominating. Why. Guys who play playoff minutes usually don't need to go to summer league, yeah. and so he dominated. But if anybody saw Jason Tate, uh, it's too rapid of reaction. It's one game in the summer league, but the kind of hype you want to bring to a franchise is what you do oh, with yeah. Jason Tatum. That you throw down a monster jam, you hit a buzzer beater, um, and that was against Markel Fultz in the 76ers. So, yep. hey, I think we could probably use the highlight of Jason Tatum's dunk, though, and we want to throw that in there. So Celtics fans have something to root for. Dollars of tax. That Durant deal helps them out a great deal, though. Boston with the ball. They made just one field goal the last few minutes. 
In fact, one of seven, and that's an oh my moment. Way Number up top, Lock still Jason looking at me as Jason Tatum rocks the rim. <laughs> Boy, this is off the dribble. You see him tuck it into the midsection there, tucks it in, just right over the top. That's off one dribble, by yeah. the way. That's a long way. That's the length and versatility that we talked about from the open. Three, three great, great reactions to the uh, Gordon Hayward signing. One, Dan Wetzel pointed this out, uh, writer at Yahoo Sports. Gordon Hayward was so conflicted and wrestling with his decision, yet he managed to own a 2100 <laughs> word column on it. It's a legendary deadline writer. Yeah, that's um, great. He ruled out the heat pretty quickly. Yeah. We knew that, uh, I think, what, on July 3rd. Yeah, the day before, yeah. So it was pretty much Utah or, or Boston. Boston. Yeah. And what was the third team? There's four decisions he was mulling over? Yeah. <laughs> no, he wasn't. No, but I love how, uh, I love how the first initial report that Chris Haynes, I think, on ESPN broke it and said he plans on signing with Boston. And everybody said, oh, no, 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 you know, pump the brakes. He hasn't decided right. yet. And it was almost like Gordon Hayward was just trying to finish up his <laughs> Players' Tribune article just to get it out in time. And then, like, when he finally released that he was signing, the Chris Haynes Twitter reporter, like, had tweeted out a meme of, like, the Hulk Hogan, like, <laughs> I think I was right that uh, Gordon sources. Hayward is signing with hey the man, Celtics. When we hear sources say in the Celtics, we usually think Danny Ainge isn't going to make a trade yes, at this point. Yeah. So, I, I, you know, it wouldn't be that surprising. Yeah. Uh, the best, though, comes from Barstool. Uh, the most, as they put it, the most Utah fan experience came from this video. What's happening, y'all? It's burning, it's camping. Gonna go like crazy, so get ready. No. Woo! Oh, Goodbye, bye. Gordon. It was fun while it lasted. Thanks for betraying us. Thanks for Have betraying fun being us. LeBron's little B-word. Yep, you're gonna be LeBron's <laughs> bitch. Bye. Nice day is See ya. What responsible oh, parenting. He puts the jersey into a fire pit, make sure the kids don't get hurt by the fire. He uses a torch lighter. I mean, I'm the type of kid who throws a lighter into like some beer lit gas canister. So <laughs> we're gonna try to make uh, things explode. And he doesn't use the curse word. Yeah, what a little B-word. Little, little B-word. B-word for LeBron. Um, that was very much what you'd expect. No offense from Utah Jazz fans. Hey, they got Rudy Gobert uh, as one of the best defenders in the NBA, if not the best defender in the NBA, especially at his position. Yep. So they got some hope going forward. We'll I talk just, more about George Hill and all those trades in another yeah. clip. Um, I just never understand the whole burning jersey thing. I mean, yeah. Gordon Hayward was a great player for the Jazz. Yeah. Just look at this last the, the postseason run they had. Mm-hmm. I mean, they made him extremely relevant, <laughs> beat the Clippers. Sorry, Dan. It was, what? A, it was a good series. <laughs> but, uh, um, but why, why, you know, betrayed? Like it's just uh, that's what you're teaching your kids right there with the little kids right there burning a jersey. You know, yeah, they're gonna grow just, up to be arsonists. I just never understand that. It's just respect your team, respect the, what he did for the organization, and, and move on. I mean, you just it was get, a match made in heaven for you, Gordon Hayward. It, I completely understand why he did it. It was, and the Brad Stevens note. I'm sure people are gonna bring up too. It makes sense that he wants to go back there. Yeah. Uh, but then people were savages because they put out this tweet, and I mean, you know, it's tough. You know. My favorite Gordon Hayward, Brad Stevens memory. Oh, <laughs> we were talking hurts. beforehand. That shot was going in, man. Oh, so 2010 close. is that what it was? Yeah, that was the 2010, 2010 finals over Duke. Oh. Over Duke, it would have been great. It was going in, but I think uh, Gordon Hayward. He said it. They have unfinished business. They have unfinished. They were business. supposed to win that championship, and now they have another chance to uh, look. If they get the number one seed again, and you have home court against Cleveland, and like you said, barring you know something crazy happens, you never never know. He knows exactly what Brad Stevens is looking for. He, That's true. Uh, he Nothing. fits in with that talent that they have now with Horford and IT and Avery Bradley and now Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum. They're gonna be very versatile. I can see it just being slightly difficult to get super excited about Gordon Hayward. And and I look, he was a top twenty player last year. Yeah. Every metric tells you that. And he kind of slid under career. the radar. Actually, about seventy games and uh, sixty five games into the season. I thought he was going to make all NBA third team. I thought he was an all NBA player yeah. based on his numbers. Get some more respect, and I realized, God, I got to put more Warriors on this list because yeah. they need to be in there. Of course, because yeah. they've won sixty-seven games and the best team in the NBA. That's just how <laughs> these things work. Of course, yeah. Um, but I can see why it would just be a little bit difficult to see like Jimmy Butler go to the Wolves and see uh, Paul George, who well, maybe Paul George is a little overhyped because of the rental. He ended up becoming like a soccer transfer. Yeah, like he became like the Paul Pogba soccer transfer. Yeah. Like, how much are we willing to part ways to get this guy? Going in? on and on and on, yeah. I'm going to save the Paul George story for the other NBA clips so you don't go too long. So comment below, like, favorite, subscribe, uh, and we will see you next time.